Hi, listeners. Welcome to the She Speaks Life podcast, a weekly encouragement where we share our God stories. I'm your host, Jamie Elizabeth, and I am so glad you are spending time with us today to listen. Hi there. Welcome to today's story. Our friend Candace Reyes is here sharing about her spiritual journey of obedience and what prompted her to write and publish Awake My Soul, Three Ways to Ignite Your Relationship with God. She has a huge heart to reach people globally, to equip them with God's truth, and develop a deep relationship with Him. Candace, thanks so much for coming on here. I can't wait for you to share everything that God has done in your life and what he keeps doing. I mean, you're just amazing. Aw, thank you, Jamie, for having me on today. I'm so excited to be with you. So uh, first of all, when you sent me the your testimony, I was just blown away of how much I can relate to everything. And so I know that the person here that's going to listen to your story will relate in some way. Um, But if you want to just start us out with who you are and, you know, got kids, you're married, um, you know, where that transformation happened to you, where uh, you saw just God starting to really reveal himself to you. Absolutely. So I am a wife um, to a wonderful artist and I have, we have three kids and our eight, the ages are 23, six, no, 17. She just turned 17 and <laughs> goes by fast. And then, um, a 14 year old. And so we're very, very busy. Our kids are in, in sports and all those types of things. And so life is kind of hectic, but, um, it was back when I was in, in college. And when I was in college, my husband was a teacher. And we had the ability to allow me to go to, back to school full time, and he and he was able to provide for us. But during that time when I was at school, God, God basically said, "Hey, I want you to write and speak one day." And I was really upset with that. <laughs> you know, have you ever had that time where God has asked you to do something and your natural instinct is just to kick the ground and protest and be like, I don't want to yeah. do this, Lord. Yeah. Well, that's, Especially that's, when it's unfamiliar and yes. it's not something you feel like, hey, this is my strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But God expects our obedience despite how vulnerable it makes us become to implement during that task. And, Mm -hmm. and so that was one thing that when he said that he wanted me to write and speak, I did, I I laughed and said, you've got the wrong girl because Mm -hmm. I have dyslexia. Um, writing is not one of my strong suits. I don't enjoy reading, uh, because it's hard, you know, with dyslexia, Mm -hmm. it's very challenging and speaking. Well, I have high anxiety. And I I try not to let it get a hold of me, but there are times that it does. And, but God, God is so good because he has made sure I understand he doesn't make mistakes and Mm -hmm. God is very patient and he's very persistent. And after this time with him and he told me that he was wanting me to write and speak, I, I felt like Gideon. And I was like, okay, hold on. (laughs) I would like a sign. I need to know that this is really what you're asking me to do because Lord, it's not something I desire. And Mm -hmm. what you're asking me to do, it was going to require me to surrender everything. Before I was going to do that, I needed to know this was really from him and I wasn't making this up in my head. Mm -hmm. And James 1, 5, it says, if any, any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I went. I needed his direction before I took the next step. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, Jamie, be careful what you ask for. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Because he answers, right? He does answer you. And Mm -hmm. that same day after he shared with me that that was what he was asking me to do was read and write. I had a phone call from my advisor at school and he's like, Hey, we need to meet. And I was like, okay. So I went in and 
he wanted me to pick a minor. And as before I even sat down, he was like, Candace, you need to minor in writing. (laughs) (laughs) I sat stunned and I just kind of took a second and I looked at him. I said, are you serious? Because what about all these math classes and science classes that I I thrive in? I I know. Can I not just do that instead? And he was like, if you want to do that, it'll take you two years. But if you choose writing, you can graduate in December. Wow. And I sat there just going, are you kidding me? I was Mm. so frustrated and I felt defeated because here Mm. I was about to go into a class with a professor and hear about all my imperfections. Right. But God did give me an answer. And he did say, this is where you're going. This is the path I have for you. And God knows. He's so good because God knew my fears. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I know what you're afraid of. So I'm going to equip you by sending you to this writing class for your minor Mm -hmm. so that you can start strengthening that ability that is within you. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, I can relate. You know, it's like. Sometimes I don't even want to write because I don't want to go through the editing of Mm -hmm. having somebody else look at it and point out all the imperfections, like you were saying, and having that rejection feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, But I have to constantly put on that, you know, perspective of, hey, you know, I am constantly in training and teaching, you know, being teachable with writing and I'm constantly needing to learn um, Mm -hmm. the the ways of grammar and and all kinds of stuff. Uh, But I totally get it because sometimes you're just like, I don't want to go through it, you know? (laughs) Right, right. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, you know, he... He was allowing me to go through this class, even though it was, it was, it was grueling, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah. but it's, it's college level, right? It's college <laughs> level. Exactly. And they're letting you yeah. know, you have all these different flaws, but yeah. I was gaining wisdom on how to craft a sentence You were so that I could yeah. actually step out and do what he's asking me to do. But you would think that I would, okay, here I graduate, right? In December. Okay. Here I'm going to go and do what he's called me to do. Nope, I did not. <laughs> I ran. I ran yeah. the other way. I like, ran that was, was enough, God. Okay, now I'm tired and that was enough obedience. <laughs> right, <laughs> Bye-bye. right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And he was, and so that's what I did. I ran to what was comfortable. I ran yeah. to what was a sure thing. I ran to what made sense. My husband was a teacher and I had friends in education. And so teaching was where I I went towards because it was a sure thing for me. Mm -hmm. And our family at the time, like I said, we we were under a one income house and the opportunity to actually have two incomes, that was really appealing. And I knew if I was going to step out and do this whole writing path with with God, who knew how long it was going to take before I would even see a paycheck. To right. help out with the family and the bills, mm-hmm. and so I um, I went to teaching, and I, I I found that I went there because number one I wasn't content with what I had. I, we had a very small house, and I really wanted to have bigger things, and I wanted my kids to do be able to to do a lot of things, and so I was looking for ways to be able to provide that for them. Mm -hmm. Um, and looking back now, I've had to repent and ask God to forgive me because I thought I knew what was best for my family. I thought Mm -hmm. I knew, I thought what God had provided for us wasn't good enough. And oh, Mm -hmm. Jamie, that was so hard. Yeah. It was so hard to, to see and, and realize that that's what I did. And so Mm -hmm. I needed to ask him for forgiveness. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, so, I mean, we all get that way where we're just mm-hmm. get, you know, discontent and you yes. take things for granted or, you yes. know, it's like you start going, well, it'd be nice to have that. And mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. it goes all the way back. Israelites were like that too. Like yes. it was just, you know, yes. that that 
part of our flesh that just desires more, right? But that yes. more is supposed to be more of Jesus, not yes, you know, amen. stuff, right? But right. And then as we align, you know, our our will should be with his will and align our hearts with his heart, then right. he just pours out and provides, right? And then Correct. And maybe get that, you know, bigger place or whatever, right. if that's the way right. God wants you to, you know, if that's where he wants you to live. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But, and I felt like, you know, I started going into God's word, um, six years after graduation, God really drew me to, to have that community with him, that, that relationship, start building that relationship. And I began to get really thirsty in, in it for his presence. Um, mm -hmm. I've done Bible study all my life. I've, I've attended Bible study. I've taught Bible study, but I felt like there was something missing and mm -hmm. it turns out there was because I was totally relying on just scholars to feed me instead of actually asking God to do it first. Mm. And God was showing me that I needed to really dig into his word personally first. I needed to mm -hmm. go and have a prayer journal and have just his Bible, instead of replacing the source with tools, I needed to mm -hmm. go to the source. Mm -hmm. And that's where God really let me hear from him, letting me know that I ran to my own Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, when Abraham was told to, to go to Nineveh, Negva, he did not go. He went to Egypt because he was worried about the famine. And he knew Egypt would, had everything that they could use and, and be able to continue his life with his wife. But he then said what? He asked his wife to become his sister. And all kinds of stuff happened. Mm -hmm. And God was letting me see, hey, Candace, you, you did not obey what I asked you to do at the beginning. You mm -hmm. ran to your Egypt. And that's really where... Um, God said, hey, it's time. It's time mm -hmm. for you to start trusting in me and believing that I've called you to do this and that it's through me this is going to, to happen. And is this while you are working? Yes. yes. Okay. So you're and feeling so, not, you know, discontent or whatever. And then right. you're going, right. oh, man, I'm like, I need to get filled up. So at least you went back to God and yes. <laughs> start filling up with the wrong things. So that's right. Good. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This is when I was working. And, and like I said, we were, I was still diving into the word. I was still um, attending Bible studies and those types of things, but I really just kept feeling like there was something missing. And it was mm -hmm. just that personal relationship with him mm -hmm. by just diving into his word. And I couldn't get enough of it. To be honest, Jamie, yeah. I, I couldn't get enough of mm -hmm. reading just his word, you know, the pages of the Bible. And it was so awesome to see him, the Holy Spirit within us, reveal in our own eyes and ears what he wants us to hear. Yes, I know. And I got to say, when I do a group Bible study, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm really, it's easy to use that as your quiet time, you know, yes. whatever workbook you're doing. and um. And I know God reveals things. Um, I just did the Elijah study with Priscilla Schreier, and yes. I was getting, yeah, so good. I was getting things uh, spoken to about, you know, what's going on in my life. I felt like God was, mm -hmm. you know, saying this and that, which didn't necessarily have anything to do with Elijah. It was just right. I could tell, like, the Lord wants me to know this through right. what I'm reading about Elijah. So right. um, I always tell people, though, that it's so important to have that quiet time. I know it's like an additional thing, and it's easy mm -hmm. to supplement, you know, your your group study and then, you know, not do your own Bible study. But it's so good, if you can, to do both. And I know – Bible study, it goes in seasons and stuff, but mm -hmm. I can really tell when I'm missing that one-on-one -on -one with him. Right. Um, there's just something special about it and, you know, intimate and um, so. and going so. through 
I went through Ephesians and got my journal out, like you were saying, and just felt like God was just pouring out just stuff. And it just was so fulfilling. It was so satisfying. So I totally get it that, you know, we could get kind of stuck with just doing Bible study and missing out on that one-on-one with God. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, and, and that's what Bible studies are, right? It's there. It's those scholars who have been spending time with God individually, just one-on-one yes. with him, and, and they're pouring out of the overflow of what yeah. he has already given them and equipped them to share. Yeah, and so, and thank goodness, right? Like I love, right. I'm going, I would have totally missed that if, yes. you know, Priscilla was pointing out all kinds of things, and I'm going, I would yes. have probably totally missed that if I read it on my own. So I'm so grateful. I'm a Bible study. I call it Bible study junkie, but I am always doing a Bible study. I love it. But yeah, you're you're right. Yes. I just think God was just really helping me see that I needed to have a balance. I needed to not use Bible study as just my only um, my only resource, my only tool to to meet with him. I needed right. I I call it my I call it a date. And God showed me that (laughs) God showed me that when you go on a date with your husband. Do you invite somebody else in on your date? Right. No. no. It's just me and my man. I usually. Right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's, just, it's just me and my our men. And, yeah. you know, God has said, that's what I want with you. I mm-hmm. want to have that one-on-one with you as well. So that's why mm-hmm. I call it a date with God. And even if it's for 15 minutes, yeah. that's what I do. And I enjoy that time with him. And it's very rich and, re- and just allows him to pour back into me. Yeah. And I want to make it clear with the listener. When we're saying Bible study, we're meaning the, um, you know, not Bible study that you're doing on your own. It's it's Bible study when you do it with a group and, you know, you, you may right. be watching a video of a Christian speaker or whatever, and you're using their workbook. Like that's what, you know, because that could get confusing there because, we want that one-on-one Bible study, but we're talking right. about having that balance. Yeah. So um, I, you're bringing me back to memories of a summer where that was um, a usual time. I would even think, oh, I need to do a Bible study. It's summer, you know, and, and I have done summer Bible study. And so sometimes I think we can get so caught up in okay, we got to do that again. Like every year we got to do, you know, and I love how God, it's like not every season, just because you did it that last time doesn't mean, you know, this is what I want you to do for, you know, this season. And he changes it up with us. And I just remember being so shocked that he said the same thing when you just mentioned, I just want one-on-one time with you. That's exactly what I heard God say this one summer when I'm, you know, talking with girlfriends and going, what Bible study, you know, this is going on at this church and this, you know, for the summer, you know, you want to register. And I just clearly got this, I'm not supposed to have a Bible study, a group Bible study this summer. I'm supposed to have this one-on-one time with him. And that's when he revealed when, uh, that I would be writing and, um, starting a book. And I mean, if I said no to that and just was like, ah, that must not be him. I mean, why would he say no to a Bible study with girlfriends? You know, that, you know, it doesn't make sense, but yes, when you're sensitive to hearing the Holy Spirit and you're sensitive in tune to that familiar, you know, voice, I, I say, you know, your, your heart ears, you know, that just mm-hmm. that familiarity. And I was like, oh my gosh, he just wants that encounter, that one-on-one with me. And I am so glad I said yes, because that's when he told me, this is what you're going, you're going to write a book. And I can totally relate because it's, no writing, you know, experience, not like something I, you know, took in high school or college. So I was like, oh, wait, what? You know, it's so (laughs) far and I'm still working on it. Hello, but we'll see (laughs) if I can finish it soon or, you know, get it going out there soon. But Mm -hmm. I don't Mm -hmm. know. I understand. Writing is hard. It really is. And yeah, but I, I think the key element here is 
you spent time with just you and God. And that's where God really started to do that transformation in saying, okay, Jamie, now it's time. Now it's time right. for you to do this. And that's exactly what happened with me. When I gave mm-hmm. God that one-on-one time, that's when he started really starting to, to strengthen me and say, okay, th- this is what I need you to do. Because I started recognizing his own character. And because I recognized his character, I started realizing, okay, now I can actually trust you because I see it for myself. You are good. You are yeah. righteous. You are trustworthy. You do fulfill all your promises. And I got to see that and started believing it myself and starting owning it, which is mm-hmm. such a key, key element, I think. You talked about changing it up. I yeah. think of so many times um, in a relationship, especially those who are, say, married 50 or up, right? I've asked, started asking them, how do you do it? How do you keep that relationship going? And a lot of them said, we spice it up. We spice up the yeah. romance. And uh-huh. so sometimes we need to do that even with God. We need to spice it up, whether that's, you know, changing it up, changing up where we do mm-hmm. our time with God, whether it is, you know, changing up the way we do it. However, Mm -hmm. however that is, God has something really special in store. If you choose to change it up a little bit, you don't have to stay in that same routine because when we do, it can, it tends to kind of go, okay, I'm kind of checking the box now. Oh yeah. It gets stale. Like, I mean, I was going through that not too long ago and I'm like, oh man, I just need to change it up. And Mm -hmm. then uh, I saw the illuminated Bible, right? And on the opposite pages is just blank so that you can just journal whatever you want. And it's so good for people who, you know, freak out writing in their Bible or, you know, Mm -hmm. don't want to do any of the highlights and writing in it. And, and I'm fine with that. But what it did was it, changed it up a little bit for me. Like I prayed about what book of a Bible to buy. And, and so yes. I did uh, Proverbs, Psalm and Romans. I bought three of them and wow, it was so cool just to change up my quiet time by buying one of those and right. basically just writing down whatever you want. What, what it was that verse saying to you or, you know, yes. writing yes. down a prayer if you feel like you just need to talk to God or, you know, what is right. he saying to me and writing that down. And so, yes. I mean, even though I do do that with my journal, it's good to have all those scripture verses. And uh, so talking about changing it up and I know your book with Awake My Soul, I mean, every time I was using that as well. So I was on vacation and I'm going through the the guided things. So you've got prayer and then read and praise. And I love how you just guide the reader right into prayer. And then with reading, you've got, you know, just the scripture verse, what, what you want. And then the questions like, where do you see God's character? And you even mm-hmm. have like, do you see any numbers in your in this scripture verse, right? And right. just pointing right. out little things to make you question that you probably wouldn't be doing on your own if you were just reading uh, the Bible. So I love, I mean, talk about changing it up. Your book definitely serves that where it gives you that variety of going, wow, I I haven't done this before. This is really cool. And you're learning through it. So I I definitely loved it. Uh, Well, I'm so glad you loved it. That's awesome. I've had so many ladies come back and say how this has been such a, it just, it's, it's opened their eyes to a new experience with God. And Mm -hmm. they love to praise and worship. Some people don't even think about to praise and worship after that time with him and to have, you know, one praise song and allow yourself just to just be immersed in his presence and just praise Mm -hmm. and worship. With the prayer, you know, we talk about the seven ways God is asking us to seek him. And that's through the Lord's prayer, which Mm -hmm. again, seven is a good, seven's a holy number. And I never realized there was seven ways he was actually asking us to pray by just going through the Lord's prayer until I did this book. And, wow. um, and yeah. there's so there, and then this book, it allows you to really dive in for your own self. It's got tons of places for you to write and make it personal for you because 
the end of the day, that the goal for this book is for you to be able to implement this in your own time without the mm-hmm. book afterwards. And yeah. so you can dive in each day for at least 15 minutes because let's mm-hmm. face it, we're all very busy, right? <laughs> we right. have tons yeah. and tons of stuff on our calendar. But if yeah. we can give God 15 minutes, that's that's so exciting for him. Mm-hmm. He, he rejoices when we can give him that. My son, he's oh. 23, and I know you have an older son as well. But yeah. When, yeah. when they call us, even mm-hmm. if it's for 15 minutes, we can be, I get excited, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to hear what he, they have to say. I want to hear what's uh-huh. going on in their life. And yeah. even if it's for 15 minutes, and God is such a good God, he is a good father. And because mm-hmm. he's a good father, he rejoices when his child says, hey, dad, I want to meet with you. I want to share with you what's going on in my life. And then mm-hmm. I want you to pour back into me as well. I want to read your word and drink it in. And then I'm going to praise and sing and rejoice in your, in your name. Yeah, That is exciting yeah. for him. And he loves that. And so mm-hmm. I just I want to encourage people to do that because that's where the transformation happens. Just like you said for yourself, when you dive in personally, the transformation mm-hmm. starts to happen. For sure. I was just talking to my daughter and she's just like 18. And she's like, when I was younger, I felt like I could open my Bible and then, oh, I'm good for the week. And she's like, but now that I'm getting older, it's not necessarily like that anymore. I feel like I need it every day. And I'm like, yeah, you know, because you're walking into, you know, the real world, you're you're approaching adulting a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Um, you know, good thing you're going through that 18 because I really didn't start feeling that daily bread that I needed until I started having babies. And then mm-hmm. I realized Right. Wow. Like I want to be the best mom possible. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so when I dive into a devotion and carve out that quiet time, I, it carries me throughout that day. I'm able to have more patience and, you know, my, my character is, I would say more Christ-like, you know, and you're kind of walking with with the fruit of the spirit more because of what you just, you know, fed yourself in the morning. And then I would go one morning, be lazy or, you Mm -hmm. know, something happened. I got busy. There was a Mm -hmm. pediatrician appointment that was too early or whatever it was. And I could see the difference in my day when I didn't dive into my quiet time when I, so it happened later in life. So I'm just going, good thing you're going through that 18 years old that you're realizing yes. that now. I mean, how yes, cool. Absolutely. Yeah. My youngest. So that was one of the things that she would do. She would notice whenever I hadn't dived into spending time with God yeah. to where there was a time we would be in the car and I'd be frustrated or something about the uh, car in front of me. And she'd like, mommy, do you need to have some Jesus time? And I'm like, yeah. Yes, baby, I do. <laughs> out of the mouths of babes, right? I mean, oh she just called me. Oh my gosh, that out. just happened to me on vacation because I I brought my Proverbs Bible. I was doing my thing, but man, I did go for some days without the quiet time on my vacation and I got cranky, snappy or something in the car uh-huh. and it was the same thing. My daughter goes, "Well, somebody didn't have their quiet time." Today. <laughs> like, <laughs> I go, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You know, like I'm totally admitting it, not getting upset because she's, you know, calling me out on it, but it is, it's so true. So, so the book came about because you were taking these Bible studies and realizing that, you know, people could get a, have a resource, a tool Mm -hmm. to be able to be guided in their quiet time with the Lord. When did missionary work become a passion for you? Missions has always been on my heart. And um, the Lord has been so kind to uh, to allow me to go to Uganda and to India and to these other places and serve. But I started realizing that I, w- I was starting to really approach witnessing and um, sharing about Jesus, kind of like the way I learned how to fish. And Mm -hmm. when I was a, when I was a kid, my mom taught me how to fish and it was more of a catch and release type of method where, Mm -hmm. you know, we caught it and then we released it. 
well, I felt like I was doing the same thing when I was going on these mission trips. Um, I was having a great time during that week or those two weeks that I was there, but then I would go home and they were still here in, in their country. And I wasn't really diving in and shepherding like I was supposed to, like building that relationship with them and encouraging them as long uh, as they were walking along the road. And mm -hmm. God was showing me, okay, Candace, it's time. You need to no longer be this fisher of men, but become a shepherd instead and walk beside mm -hmm. them and guide them and care for them. And so mm -hmm. that's where uh, the nonprofit we have is called Hooks to Crook Ministries. And it has that name because we're, go we're teaching people how to go from being that fisher of men to a mm -hmm. disciple guiding others for Jesus Christ. And mm -hmm. so once we had this book out, I started, um, cause the first original book was called a 15 minute date with God, strengthen your relationship in three ways. And I was in the shower and God was like, Candace, you are limiting me. And I said, how am I limiting you? And he was like, uh, you need to expand for, this is not just for women here in the U S this is for everyone. And mm -hmm. so I then started reaching out to my contacts. Um, who are in, who are in missions. And I said, Hey, I need to know, is this a resource you could use? And so they got back with me and said, yeah, actually it is because mm. you need to change some things. For instance, the word date in other, in other countries, that's not really considered what we think date is. Right. And, um, and some other uh, countries feel like that's too, that's too personal as well with, mm. with a holy God as well. And so they were like, mm -hmm. change it to something like one-on-one -on -one with God. And and then they also kind of gave me some more questions to ask in, in the scripture reading as well to kind of help just dive a little bit deeper. And um, and so that's what we did. I, I began to kind of reformat it and have different stories that are more stories that any culture could relate with because that's challenging. <laughs> but yeah, it is something right. that I felt like God was really asking for. And mm -hmm. um, our goal now as a nonprofit is to pour everything back into the book so that these missionaries can have it in the dream language of the culture that they are, are helping and ministering mm -hmm. to. And so, so cool. right now, I actually have um, over half of the book is done in Bengali translated into mm. Bengali, which is amazing. I know it's pretty cool. Wow. Um, and we have, we are planning on doing a fundraiser, uh, with our book release party to help raise the $600 that we're needing for it to translate into Spanish. So that's wow. exciting because I have a translator yeah. ready to go and we're just waiting to, to raise the funds so that she can get started. But that mm. will be two different languages. And then we're hoping uh, with more books um, being purchased that we will be able to provide the next language. So I've got another one, uh, missionary waiting for one in Lao, uh, which, mm. I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. Wow. So wow. that is on the move. And Are these all is, these different languages in Africa? or No, not all of them. Um, okay. So would you say Lao? Like, where's Lao that? Lao is in Thailand. Okay. Yeah, Laos I'm not Thailand. familiar with all these different languages. So yeah, <laughs> neither was I, <laughs> and I'm I'm starting to learn a little bit more. Yeah. So, but yeah, Very no, cool. and Bengali is in India, and so okay. um, we've got a missionary over there in India who is just chomping it to bits. He's like, "Let's go! I'm ready! I'm ready to do this!" Mm -hmm. um, and then we have what a, uh, what a great support system you yes. have. Yes, like yes. that. That is so essential, like, especially when you're got this book that God has birthed in you and you're like, yes. okay, like, where's my people to help me get this out? Absolutely. How, how mm -hmm. does this, you know, how do you want me to, to do this, Lord? And, and, but he is so good. He is so good because he continues to bring those people to come rally beside us. So I, cool. I, it's, it's, it really is. I, I, it makes me smile because it's all him. It's mm -hmm. him. And I, yeah. I'm just so honored and blessed that he is allowing me to see him move and the way mm -hmm. that he is. Yeah. Yeah. See his work. So cool. Yes, absolutely. So, mm. But the reason why this book was actually even written in the first place was just because I knew I was struggling with this. I needed mm -hmm. to know how to, to not feel so overwhelmed and, and intimidated by just opening up my Bible and relying on Bible studies. 
uh, mm-hmm. you know, on other scholars. I wanted to to open up my Bible and be able to read it and not feel overwhelmed. And so that's one of the things that this book does is really try to help encourage others, men and women, to to open up their Bible. So you can choose any book of the Bible you want when you start with this book, which is really mm-hmm. neat. Um, mm-hmm. And then you start for chapter one. And we also start taking it in small chunks because I think sometimes we want to read the word, but it's almost like we're we're trying to drink from a fire hydrant. <laughs> and it's just right. over yeah. too much. And then uh-huh. we get overwhelmed with that going, ah, I can't do this anymore. And we put it away. And mm-hmm. so I really wanted to start off with small steps. Again, God is in the small. He, he's in the mm-hmm. small details. He's in that mustard seed. There's power yeah. in the small. And in those three verses, there's so much meat, Jamie. It's incredible mm-hmm. how much meat is just in three verses. But mm-hmm. when we start that way, that's when we start that traction. We start that, you know, kind of like a snowball effect where it continues yeah. to grow. Mm-hmm. So cool. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful. I I loved it. And I love your heart for, you know, Jesus and people and, you know, just the helping people, you know, have that personal relationship because that is – Definitely the saving grace for, you know, all of us, but especially something that I really just started radically changing my life when I really understood that personal relationship and developed that personal relationship. And um, when he became real in my life, that's when the transformation happened, like you were saying. And so I want you to be able to share with people where they can connect with you. But before that, could you just speak life of a takeaway for the listeners here that they can kind of marinate on after they are done with the story? Sure. Um, My biggest takeaway that I'd love for your listeners to, to take away is God wants to spend time with you. God wants to to know you so intimately and not, he already knows you, but he wants you to know him that way in an Mm -hmm. intimate way. And, you know, the world will try to distract us. The world will try to, um, you know, busy our schedules. The world will try to tell you that you can't understand this. This is too overwhelming. You need somebody to help you with this. Well, friend, you have somebody, it's called the Holy Spirit. And he will Mm -hmm. equip you to read his word and to understand it. And he wants to have that relationship with you. And if you can give him 15 minutes, 15 minutes each day, that is transformation all in itself. Yeah. Yeah. So good. And I can see God's power working through you. You speak really well. And this was a great interview and you write really well as, I mean, this is just giving, this should give everybody the inspiration. If you don't feel like you can speak or write, I mean, this just shows right here that, you know, if you're feeling fearful or it's not a strength, like this is, I mean, uh, it was Paul, right? I'll boast Mm -hmm. even more so where I'm weak because we know that that will be where God's power will be going through us and it will be even more excellent. So I just want to applaud you. I'm so proud of you and and saying yes and breaking through that fear because I can definitely relate to all of it. And I know whoever's listening can relate one way or another, may not be speaking or writing, but it could be something else that you're fearful of and you just have to just still face it and walk into that obedience and stay focused on him and Mm -hmm. he will get you through. And then he reveals himself, but it's that hard part of trusting and relying on him and trusting him in that moment when, when your flesh is telling you otherwise. (laughs) Right. Right. And it could be just, you know, going and and purchasing a meal for somebody on the street and you're like, Lord, I don't want to go do that. And he's Mm -hmm. he's like, but you need to. You just Mm -hmm. never know how powerful that could be for somebody. Right. They can connect with me on hookstercrook.com or they can also check me out on the Red River podcast. Um, And 
I'm on Facebook on hooks to crook com or Instagram hooks to crook as well. And it's hooks H O O K S with the number two and then C R O O K. I thank you so much for coming on here and sharing truth with us and wisdom and your book. And uh, we're going to have a link, right, for people to be able to get the first chapter. So I will have that in the show notes. And uh, please subscribe to my newsletter. You'll get that link as well. So you'll get the first chapter. And uh, it's so worth it. It's so cool. Change up your quiet time with this book. You will not regret it. I I love it. It spiced it up for sure with my morning. So thank you, Candice. And thank you for your obedience to God. Well, thank you for having me, Jamie. It's been a blessing to be here. Thank you so much for listening today. I trust that God has encouraged you through this message. For more information on this ministry and to access free downloads, please visit my website at jamieelizabeth.com and sign up. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Jamie Elizabeth She Speaks Life. That's J A Y M E Elizabeth She Speaks Life. Until next time, my friends, I pray God reveals himself through your own life story.